Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is part of our EVGA P67 for the Wind Motherboard Review and this is an overview of the UEFI AMI BIOS from AVGA and as you can see we are looking at the overview section and uh, basically have the an overview of everything it's pretty self-explanatory you have option to change the system language you only have one option and you have system date course you can change it there system time and BIOS information now we are using the latest BIOS it is the 1.18 and uh, shows you the memory information the thing I like is that it only shows you the capacity but also shows you the um, setting you're running it at I have it at DDR3 1600 now we're going to take a look at that how to set it set that to 1600 later on in our overclocking section and uh, pretty much shows you all the voltages that you're, uh, well not all, but uh, most of the voltages that are uh, informi informative and let's go to the advanced section, you have your ACPI configuration here you can uh, change your ACPI sleep state, hibernation or uh, ACPI auto config uh, these are actually all the default values I'm going to mention which uh, whenever I come across a section I'm going to mention if I changed it or not but uh, assume that uh, what you're seeing are the default uh, settings here uh, you have option of disabling some of the um, device configurations you have a uh, if you look at our overview the, it has a cross, uh, crossfire rather a uh, compact flash card on board you have your eSATA or you can even disable one or both of the PCI Express LAN ports the audio and the high precision timer right at the bottom and let's go back up again you have the SATA configuration shows you each of the devices connected SATA ports of course you have two SATA 6G and uh, four SATA 3Gs and then let me just show you what the options are um, inside so it's uh, this one okay. enable hot plug or disable and top you can choose whether you enter default as AHCI mode you can enter IDE, RAID or disabled completely so disabled don't have any ports there IDE mode an option of uh, enhanced disabled or compatible or AHCI mode default and uh, can disable or enable aggressive link power management and finally RAID mode it's uh, basically no other option so go back to HCI mode which is default and finally USB here you have uh, it shows you all the uh, op, uh, ports connected to your device you have option to enable or disabling uh, each of the port and you also have a uh, legacy USB support right at the bottom and finally the hybrid monitor shows you the temperatures and some of the voltages and where you can control your fan speed and um, and uh, for your CPU and for your system as well more voltages at the bottom now as you can see there is a smart fan option and uh, a manual control I, th I think or the default is smart fan but I've uh, I I've made the CPU fan set to manual because originally I had this setting. I have I am using a Cooler Master V6 GT which has a very loud fans if you're running it at the, the maximum speed. So I like running it at a low speed that it, it still does a very good job of cooling your system. Uh, but if you're uh, I I like using the sleep mode on this system and I tried sleep mode and when I whenever, whenever I wake up this it will completely forget the smart fan option that I've set which is as you can see here and it would run it and the smart fan option uh, the default setting it came with so I had that, that's one uh, issue I found with the uh, EVGA P67 for the win motherboard so I for now I would set it to manually remain at 30 30 percent fan duty so I, that, there was no issue recalling that setting only the smart fan so now let's move on to the chipset. We have the ME subsystem configuration. Nice it inside. You control each one. Enable and disable. Should advanced option. And of course, one more nested option is the integrated clock chip configuration. Right there. 
enable or disable ICC profile and those are all the default values and of course here are some more is the optional ROM support or legacy option and you have launch PXE op optional ROM or stor storage optional ROM and you also have the MMIO align and DMI gen options right below it so here you're gonna restore AC power loss and CPU temperature minor you can enable or disable uh, the EVGA P67 for the win actually has an onboard temperature monitor which also doubles as a debug LED if you disable it uh, most of the time it will it will uh, if you're booted into a system it will indicate the CPU temperature but if you disable it in here in the uh, BIOS it will only act as a debug LED so these are all the default values let's go to the overclocking section these are the default values except for the uh, dim voltage I've set it to manual at uh, 1.5 volt which is what my Corsair Vengeance memory modules require and uh, let's go one by one each one memory configuration here I've loaded the XMP profile so you can see there what the options are default SPD profile XMP profile and create your own custom profile now the custom profile if I recall correctly was only added on the uh, the latest BIOS which is the uh, version 18.18 uh, that's a good feature to have now you can control each individual memory timings after that in the original BIOS that the EVGA P67 for the wind shift with uh, there was no option so it was nice that uh, EVGA included that in the update and CPU advanced configuration here is where disable or enable some of the settings you want to if you want to overclock now these are all the default values if you're overclocking and uh, you would dis obviously disable EIST when leave to remote on and uh, disable C1E disable CPU C3 and, uh, let's see what other options are available and right at the top you have some of the settings As you can see we are running the R2600K processor the default 33.4 gigahertz and the you, all right that's uh, it's not running an overclock setting currently and the base clock setting is inside here you can option of changing it uh, to apply settings immediately but uh, it, this will forget the overclock after the reboot is a uh, it's more it's designed for a uh, platform uh, to limit platform stability and spontaneous restart when you're overclocking now we have your overclocker you can uh, change this value by uh, the cpu multiplier by pressing the plus or minus sign see where uh, you would do the overclock part and your dummy oc option and one button way to increase your CPU frequency by six, 600 megahertz it's a quick uh, quick OC so it will bump it up to 4 gigahertz for us and the VDROOP option obviously if you're overclocking you want to do without VDROOP and uh, PLL voltage override you also want to enable this one when you're overclocking beyond 4 gigahertz and ELITE Ratio control allows you to increase the CPU frequency while in Windows using the EVGA Elite utility. It is a CPU ID uh, based software used to monitor and overclock your P67 motherboard. And here's some more options, more advanced options for advanced users and overclockers. You can even control your NF200 voltage in here and uh, your PWM frequency and certain other voltages. So here's your TGP duration at the bottom. And let's move to the boot options. Here you can set your set a prompt timeout and your boot lock, uh, num lock state. This is another feature I fired up here, which was recently added. So welcome addition. And here's the quiet and fast boot. Now quiet boot, if I recall correctly, I think uh, enables or disables that uh, the loading screen at the beginning. And fast boot, obviously the. Uh, 
disables or enables the boot initiation of minimal set of devices required to launch so boot much faster of course from a gate 820 active option optional ROM your force bias or keep current setting for uh, optional ROM messages you have interrupt 19 capture enable or disable and uh, here we can set your boot options now of course I have the hard drive and the uh, and my, and uh, my optical drive here. So if I if I select one, it will automatically change the second option, unlike some of the biases. And uh, here you have to change your BBS priorities. So you only have one optical drive installed. And for the hard drive, I have installed two other drives just to compare and see. Uh, and finally, here is the security option. Well, it's not much there. And these are this is the more important part: the save and exit. Of course, save changes and discard changes. You can uh, just use these if you're still overclocking. You just want to save something just in case your uh, power goes out or or you're afraid that might happen. You want to change it just in the middle of while you're changing your settings and or either discard it. Now here's the top. You have uh, save changes and exit or discard changes and exit. Same changes and reset. It will reset. So you have the either pressing the option of uh, entering the BIOS again but save changes and exit will immediately go into Windows of course you have your restore default functions important if you're after and after your flash of BIOS to always restore defaults or even before you have to restore defaults make sure you're running in the stock settings now here are also some of the boot options quick boot override option right here and the setup profile now the good thing about this is that you can save and load your overclock profiles so I already have one which is the XMP setting you can uh, write in another one shows up there a load profile let's wait this load default one that's pretty much it and I'm going to try now to boot to Windows and so you can you can try to measure how long it will take to boot. I'll do save changes and reset so it will boot completely. Uh, it will load the BIOS again and you can measure how long it, it boots into Windows.